What's up guys, today we're gonna to look at Advent of Code Day 8. This is a hard one, and it's about a grid, a 2D grid of trees. The trees have a height. In fact, that's the only thing they have in the input. And we are looking for visibility. Like if I'm looking in from the outside, I can see up to a certain height, and then I can't see the shorter ones past that. Or if I'm in this forest, I can see up to a certain height, and then I can't see past that. So we're going to look through, and in part one, they're asking about how many are visible from outside. So the idea is, if you're on the edge, you're definitely visible. And then when we're going in, we can always see you if you're not smaller than the other ones. So if I see, if I'm like on the right and I'm looking in at this two, I can't see the one. The one is hidden. Uh, if I'm looking in from the right and I see this 3, well, the 7 is fine. I can totally see that 7 because it's sticking out a lot over the 3. So what we're going to do is make a list of lists. I guess I could import some array module or something. And we're going to have a bunch of for loops, probably. So let's get to it. This is importing the lines, and so if I print lines, it's just, I think, 100 by 100. Um, the input looks like this, just a big old block of numbers. So I was thinking we need multiple properties for each one, right? Like we need to keep track of the height, but we also need to keep track of visible, yes or no, in just a boolean but um, we couldn't really do much of that with the numbers unless you do some trickery like oh negative numbers are, are visible or something and then you compare with absolute value um, so I, I'm betting I haven't looked at other people's solutions but I'm betting that some of them would just make another grid you've got like another grid that has zeros and ones for is it visible or not and so when we're going through this grid we can just make that other grid along the way. I probably should do that, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to make a tree class. I'm going to make a tree object. And so we're going to have a grid that every spot is taken by a tree. And the tree has a height property, but it also has a visibility. And it also has whatever we need to add for part two. So I'm going to say class tree, and it's going to have init self and height that's the only thing we need to tell it when we're starting out and so self dot height equals height and then self dot visibility which is kinda hard to type equals false it's gonna start out false then we might make it true if we you know analyze the structure and see that it's true and then we're also gonna make a wrapper in case we wanna print these guys and we're going to do that first, actually. So it's going to return. Um, actually, I want to make it like just T or F. So I'm going to say viz equals um, T if self dot visible. Let me just say visible. I guess that makes sense, right? Visible. Else F. So that when we print it, it only takes one character, you know. So this is going to have um, self.height and then fizz. I think that makes sense. So now we're going to go through and like make the grid. I'm going to call it forest, I suppose, because it's going to have um, tree of like whatever's in that spot for spot in row for row in lines I think that's good because this is a two-dimensional thing and two-dimensional uh, list comprehensions are always the kind of thing that I think I'm typing right and then it doesn't work so now I'm going to say for row in forest print row I don't know if that's going to work let's see what happens now the problem is they're super long it's hard to even see the 100 character. But that's what I want. I want each one to have uh, 
height and a visibility so that when we loop through we get both. Is that? Yeah, okay. Um, I was checking to see if the recording was any good. The next step is to actually change the visibility if it's meeting the criteria. So again, we're looking from the outside and we want to see if um, our guy is either on the edge or taller than everyone between him and the edge. So we're going to have um, some kind of for loop to, uh, let me just leave that at the end because we'll probably do that to test stuff along the way. I'm going to say like um, for row in forest um, for tree in row well, we're probably going to want a like number, so I'm going to say enumerate row, and then we can do our thing. I want to go um, by the rows because the rows are a real thing. Like this isn't a two-dimensional array in the sense of rows and columns. It's rows, and then in order to find columns, we have to jump from one row to another, which is really hard. But to slide along a row is really easy, so I just want to do that. And then we'll figure out the other part later. But this is going to be like, OK, can you see from the left? And can you see from the right? So we're going to say, um, if something um, from like row up to t, then tree dot visible equals true. Like whatever this something is, whatever our test is, is going to be um, going up to t from the left, and then the same thing from the right. It's going to be t or maybe t plus one, I guess, to the end. Um, so what is this test? I want to be able to say like. Is it the tallest? Like going all the way from the beginning. So I'm going to make a function called tallest because I don't know. <laughs> it sounds good to me. I don't want to make it um, 10 more levels of indenting because we've already got some indenting. Um, we've got a loop. We've got this sub loop, we've got an if, and we might indent again if this tree dot visible thing is not the only part of this. Um, so I don't want to have a bunch. I want to have this part extracted into its own thing. So I want to say like if the tallest is less than tree, like we're looking up to the tree but not including it. So I'm going to make a function called def tallest and it takes a row, or I don't want to call it row, I'm going to call it section, because I don't know if it's going to mention the board. And if I mention the board, I might use row. I'd want to make it a different thing. So I'm going to say, like, OK, if there's no section, like if we're asking it to do the slice um, of nothing and it's up to if it's on the edge, then we have to return 0, I think. Oh, you know what? This is going to be a little different. Um, we're looking at trees. We're not looking at numbers. So we're going to have to return a tree of 0. Or maybe a tree of negative 1, just to be sure. Just to be like, yeah, it's definitely not the tallest. You know, it's not equal to our tree. Because one of the weird things about this is that there are zeros. There are trees that are 0. And when I looked at the input, at first I thought, oh, maybe 0 means there isn't a tree at all. But no, it is a tree. It's just like the minimum tree. So what we need to do for this is to add a less than uh, dunder method so that we can compare two trees. I know I'm probably getting myself into trouble, and I should have just used numbers from the beginning. But I kind of like this. So we're going to return self dot height is less than other dot height. And then we're going to say, like, 
okay, now it's fine to do this. Now it's fine to compare uh, tree to the tallest other tree. And so if we're on the edge, it's going to return a negative height tree. And our guy wins, because our guy is, the, is higher than negative, even if it's 0. And if we're comparing like somebody in the middle, then it's going to go okay, up to it. And if we're taller than the tallest between us and the edge, then we must be visible. Okay. Now, this might be duplicating the work. Like, if we found one that's visible, well, this is going to check again if it's visible from the other way, which is kind of wasteful. But, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. So let's run it now and see if that works. I know it's not the entire question, because we have to check from top and bottom. Um, What's wrong with this? Oh, the height is actually not an integer. When we get it from the input, it's a string. So our class was fine, but our input to the class was not. OK. Yes, look at that. So now some of them are true, because they are visible from the east and west, left and right, whatever we want to call it. For example, the first one in each row is true, because um, even if it's 0, it's taller than the theoretical negative one tree um, outside of it. And the higher guy uh, after it, like the zero, zero, 002, is true. And if there's a bigger one after this, there is. That 3 is visible, even though it takes a long way to get there. So this is great. Now, the problem is jumping from one row to another row to do this. Um, other stuff is not great. So I'm going to do something kind of I don't know if it's a bad habit or not, but I have this um, idea in my mind from the past when I was doing another program where we would just rotate the whole thing and then go by rows again. And for this one, it doesn't really matter that we go back to the original. Like, it's going to be fine. We check, we check, and then it tells us to find how many or something. It doesn't say where they are. So we really only have to rotate it once. And the way to rotate is to say, like, well, actually, I'm going to put it in a function. Equals rotate clockwise forest. And then we're going to make a, um, what we, grid, I don't know. And then we say uh, return, OK, list zip star grid which is a weird thing but the way we're doing this is that you're going through the grid backwards and doing a little whoop 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 and it will rotate it in a very um, concise way to say that but um, that means that all we have to do now is just go through the left and right again uh, through rows and we don't have to worry about like oh do we go through the columns and do we have to like we can't use this nice little slicing thing at least not easily so um, we're gonna end up doing this twice since we're gonna do it twice I'm just gonna put it in a function check visibility forest um, and so what we're going to do is check visibility of the forest, rotate it, and then check visibility again. And that will flip the ones to true if they need to be true. And it will ignore them if they don't. Like if it was already true from before, it's not going to reset it or anything. Um, so now I'm going to hit run. And I guess I'm not going to notice. I guess we should see that the entire top row and the entire bottom row is all T. I was going to say I wouldn't really notice if all these random things look different, but uh, the top one is all T's, the bottom one is all T's. That means it got it um, like edges, edges both ways. It's because like the first of each one is still a T. And you'll notice it's a um, parentheses now instead of brackets because this list zip star thing does turn them into tuples 
which if we had to keep them lists, we would have to add another step to that. It doesn't matter here because we're actually um, inside of each one is a reference to an object. And so we can still change the object by telling you, oh, your visible stat is now true or something. And the tuple doesn't, it doesn't know that it's being uh, changed, even though a tuple's supposed to be unchanging. So for this, what is our actual question? Is that we're supposed to find how many are visible? So all we have to do is count up the trues, right? We can just say, like, um, I don't know, how are we going to do this? For row and forest, um, visibles equals, um, or no, it'll have to be plus equals. Um, sum of well, I guess we can just say one if tree dot visible else zero if tree or no for tree in row and then Visibles equals zero, and then at the end we print visibles. Is that right? I'm not sure. I always do my list comprehensions uh, half unconsciously and half nervously, so I think that might be right. Let's see. 1829. Is that what I put? That is what I put earlier, and I did this earlier in a pretty ugly way. What you're seeing now is like despite how ugly it might look, is way better than what I had at first. So here's the problem. I don't know how to do part two. I was messing around, and I was um, pretty far off, and it got to the point where it was saying, like, oh, you have to wait five minutes between each attempt, which I had never seen before. Usually it says one. So I wanted to post a video because I want to do these as a sort of vlog each day. However, this is the first one I haven't finished. And of course I'll go back. Probably later today I'll think of something or I'll just cheat and watch somebody else's. But that might not even help because if somebody else is doing it in such a different way and they don't have this class and rotate nonsense, it might be um, impossible to port over into mine. So I do want to think about how to do this. Part two says, okay, instead of looking in from the outside, we're looking out from the inside and it says if I have a tree in the middle I want to see like how far can I go to the left how far can I go to the right how far can I go I don't know if we want to call it up down or north south or whatever and then it has a score which is multiplying all those together so if you're on the edge you can see zero your score is zero no matter what if you're just seeing one in each direction their score is one and um, we have probably a similar structure for the algorithm. We're probably going to do something like this, except um, we have to do a certain amount of backwards backwardsness from this, because it's like when we're going up to the tree, well, that might end before we even get to the tree. And what we need to see is the tree on the way out. If it sees something too tall, well, then it stops. And it doesn't really matter what's between that and the edge. So we're trying to um, start from the tree and go out. And what I'm trying to avoid is to have more for loops inside of for loops. I've already got more indenting uh, than I'm comfortable with. But we'll figure something out. I want to end this now, but I do want to say that um, I'm going to come back and solve this maybe later today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next year. We'll see how it goes.